most of them, it was the happiest moment of their lives. The last time they were world champions was 1959. But remember the year before? Sudden death at Yankee Stadium between the Colts and the Giants. It was called the greatest game ever played. Ten seconds left to go. Mario will attempt the field goal to the 20-yard line. Here's the boat. It is high. It is good. He makes it. Mario makes it with seconds left to go. Ties the ball game 17-17. How about that? The seeds of victory in the 1971 Super Bowl game were actually planted during that overtime victory. For an impression was made on an 11-year-old youngster in El Paso, Texas, named Jimmy O'Brien. And that impression reached reality in the warm breezes of Miami's Orange Bowl just five seconds before the Colts and Cowboys, almost in similar fashion, stampeded into another sudden death. It is a 32-yard field goal attempt. Head onto the goalpost. Earl Morrill is holding. Nine seconds showing on the clock. The Cowboys and the Colts all tied up at 13 to 13. If this attempt goes awry, we will undoubtedly go into sudden death overtime. But what do you say? Let's win it in regulation time. Morrill is kneeling. O'Brien is ready. The Cowboys will be charging. There is the snap. The kick is up. It is long enough. It is... A few seconds later, it was official. And the Baltimore Colts, under Coach Don McCafferty, are one second away from winning the big one. Morton has the team at the line, takes the snap. He's going back to throw. He gets the long, long, long pass away, and it is intercepted by the Colts. The ball game is over. Intercepted by Jerry Logan. The last play of the game, and I guess, I guess it was just not to be for the Dallas Cowboys and the Baltimore Colts have won the Super Bowl, Super Bowl V, by a score of 16-13, to 13, the Colts over the Cowboys. After 11 long years, the Colts were back. They were champions. The usually cool, steel-nerved 23-year-old rookie kicker revealed a layer of emotion under his normally thick outer crust. I, know, I can't really describe it. Uh, matter of fact, it made me cry, and I usually don't cry very much. I'm usually pretty uh, sullen. And I, I can't really describe it. It's the greatest thing in the world. That you know, probably ever happened to me as long as I live. I kept my head down, which was unusual. <laughs> and uh, I guess it went through. It kind of curved to the uh, right a little, and then went back to the middle. And for 36-year-old Earl Morrill, a loser on the same field two years before, the vindication was particularly sweet. It's a long time since that last one, and uh, I tell you, this is what uh, we worked for, and it, it's a great feeling being on this side, on the winning side, and... Uh, I'm uh, just happy to be here. I tell you, I hate to see anything happen to Johnny. I just, uh, for myself, uh, getting a chance to come back and play, and uh, we come out on the winning side. Our defense uh, did a tremendous job. Got us that ball back and uh, put us in that scoring position. I, I'm just tickled to think about it. It's a great feeling. The question marks were there before the season began, and they haunted the team right up until the final Sunday. A so-so record in 1969, aging quarterbacks, new conference, eight new opponents, inexperienced head coach, erratic kicking, suspect defensive line, and a weak running game. Before the season, in a surprise move, the inexperienced O'Brien was installed as the Colts field goal kicker. Unknowingly, the blueprint to the Super Bowl was beginning to take shape. The march to the title actually began against San Diego on September 20th. It's now field goal time, and Jim O'Brien, a rookie, who has booted two field goals in this game already, will be out to attempt. The clock stopped with 59 seconds remaining. And very early in this game, he booted one from close in. The officials waited a long, long time, and signal was no good. He has two out of three. He will attempt this one from the 28-yard line. Slight angle to the right. Earl Morrill kneeling. Tension is mounting. Morrill holds out the hand. There's the snap. The kick is up. It's long enough. It is good. And the Baltimore Colts are out in front by a score of 16 to 14 over the San Diego Chargers 
on a 28-yard field goal by Jim O'Brien. The Colts' 16-14 win was costly, however, as durable Tom Matty twisted his knee. Oh, my knee popped out, so I, they don't really know what's wrong right now. They call it a sprained knee, so I think it's going to be at least a couple weeks, but I'm going to be back in there. Make sure of that. Re-injuring the knee against Boston, Matty's season would be one of frustration. Hoping for two in a row, the Colts welcomed Kansas City for a Monday night game at Memorial Stadium and came out on the short end of a 44-24 decision that left players and fans in a state of disbelief. The Chiefs, humbled by their Super Bowl victim Minnesota the week before, scored early and often. Interceptions and a devastating Kansas City pass rush led by Mays, Buchanan, Brown, and Culp left Coach Don McCafferty picking up the pieces. It was just one of those games that uh, we've been involved in before both on the winning side and the losing side, where uh, we beat some team 56 uh, nothing, and um, we weren't that better than they were. And that was one of those things happened that night. Uh, no matter what Kansas City did was right, and no matter what we did was wrong. There's no use looking back. Uh, that's not going to help you. You have to look uh, forward to the next week. The Orioles-Reds World Series game forced the Colts to switch their Sunday clash with Boston to Harvard Stadium. Four of their first five games would be away from home. Joe Cap had just signed with Boston, and the Patriots were sky high. After a scoreless first quarter, Earl Morrill began to move the team. Double wing to the left now, third and seven. At the Boston 13-yard line, Morrill back to throw, takes the snap, spots his man, fires into the end zone, complete for the touchdown to Ed Hinton. He got in front of Darrell Johnson. Johnson lost him there someplace, and Hinton takes the pass for a 13-yard touchdown. The Colts led 7-6 to six after three quarters. Then, with a minute and 52 seconds left in the game, the incomparable Unitas, a veteran of pressure situations, faced a crucial down. Well, we head into the final two minutes. The Colts clinging to a one-point lead, 7-6 to six over the Boston Patriots. And a tough battle here this afternoon. Colts in possession, third and two. Just short of the Colts, 45. United takes the snap, the handoff, fake handoff to Maitland, pass downfield to Roy Jefferson, he loses the 30, the 25, the 10, the 5, and he can't get in. Johnny United did a beautiful job there of faking Maitland into the line. All of a sudden, Jefferson crossed over, he was wide open, and United hit him, and Jefferson outran Darrell Johnson to the goal line, and the coach broke it open quickly with a 55-yard scoring play. And the Colts walked off the victors 14-6. The following week at Houston's Astrodome, it was raining on the outside, but conditions were ideal on the inside, as the Colts made it three out of four with a 24-20 comeback win over the Oilers. With seconds left and the outcome in jeopardy, the cool, loose Unitas calmly went to work. Unitas takes the snap, goes back to throw, looks downfield, set, fires long, into the end zone, it's complete! The cold offensive line had its best game against Houston. Center Bill Curry noted the improvement. And as far as the offensive line communicating with each other, I'll tell you, we've been communicating with each other all week because uh, we've been getting a lot of abuse from from our fans and from the press, and uh, unfortunately we deserve it because we haven't been protecting our passers. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, John was not tackled a single time for a loss today. He may have been rushed a couple of times. I don't know until I see the films, but... Um, we talk to each other all day about it. keep them out, keep them out, give John time. And with the kind of receivers we have and with John being able to throw the ball as well as he does, we know that if we can do our job, we're going to get, get a lot of points. Now it was October 18th, and the game they had long awaited. The celebrated rematch with Joe Namath and his New York Jets. And after two years, Baltimore fans found room to cheer. The Colts led 17 to nothing when Namath took to the air lane. Clicking on 34 out of 62 tosses, Broadway Joe suffered six interceptions by the alert Baltimore defense, two of which went for touchdowns. Joe Namath in the white shoes gets behind the center. Long count. Takes the snap. Goes back to throw on first down, and it's batted down by Bubba Smith, and then intercepted by Jerry Logan going into the end zone for a touchdown. Bubba Smith blocks that ball off his fingertips right into the hands of Jerry Logan, his second interception of the season, and Logan takes it 24 yards for the touchdown, and the Colts are out in front by a score of 9 to nothing. Namath takes the snap on third down, back to throw again. Flip. Intercepted by Bob Grant down the sideline to the 10, the 5, and he's going to the touchdown. Bob Grant comes up with his first interception of 
of the season and goes about 28 yards for the TD. Interception by Bob Grant and the Colts are out in front, 26 to 5. The Jets were destroyed and Namath's season ended abruptly with a broken wrist. Returning home the following week, the Colts made it two straight over Boston. This time winning 27 to 3. Unitas played no favorites with his receivers. Unitas takes, fakes the handoff, lost a pass to Maitland, and he's going in! Johnny Unitas gambled again, he faked the handoff, turned around, Maitland was slanting off to the right side, there was nobody there, and Unitas just flipped it to him all alone, he goes into the end zone, and the Colts are out in front, 9-3. to three. Colts are at the Patriots' 14-and-a-half yard line, 52 seconds remaining in the first half. Colts with a seven-point lead, 10-3 to three over the Boston Patriots. Curry over the ball at center. Again, triple wing, left side. United takes the snap, back to throw, looks for Jefferson, fires downfield, it is complete in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown to Roy Jefferson. Third down, just about a yard to go now. And he's going back to throw on third and short yardage. He's throwing for the corner, and it is complete in the end zone for the touchdown to Jimmy Orr. Jimmy Orr beats Darrell Johnson on the play, takes it for the touchdown. The Granite Colt defense, led by Bubba and Billy Ray Smith, Mike Curtis, Fred Miller, Ray May, Rick Volk, and Jerry Logan, was also coming of age. The season's midpoint was reached in glittering style, a 35 to nothing whitewash of Don Shula's Miami Dolphins. In handing Shula his second consecutive shutout, the Colts discovered a new weapon. Seiple standing at his own 38. To get the kick away, Gardine standing at the 10-yard line as the safety. There's the snap, the kick, a wobbler. Gardein moves forward, takes it on the dead down the 20, across the 30, the 40. He may go to the 50, downfield to the 40. He'll go all the way, the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5. Into the end zone for the touchdown. He took that ball on the dead run at the 20-yard line. It was a low kick. He moved forward, and the Dolphin defenders had overrun him. There were only about five men left back there when Gardein took that punt. I looked up and saw the punt, and I saw the... Uh, the coverage overrunning the punt, and I, I felt if I could get to the ball, that I, and I could see a lane straight up the field. That's the greatest thing of my life, man. Ice ready. That's the greatest thing I've ever done. And when the second half began, it was Jim Duncan's turn. Colts out in front by a score of 14 to nothing. Your premium teeing the ball up. And we're just about ready to get the second half underway. Deep for the Colts, Ron Gardine and Jim Duncan. Yepremian, the left-footed soccer kicker, moves forward, gets the kick away. High, end over end, coming down in front of the goalpost at the two-yard line to Duncan. Up to the 15, the 20, cuts to the outside, to the 25, gets a block. He's at the 30, the 40, the 50, down the sideline. He'll go all the way. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for the touchdown. A 99-yard kickoff return to start the second half, and the Baltimore Colts are out in front by a score of 20 to nothing. The Colts' first play from scrimmage the following week against Green Bay proved they would try anything. First and ten Colts at their own 20. The handoff goes to Boulash, reverse, and it goes to Haverlack, and it was in at left end, fires a long pass deep down the field, and it is taken by Roy Jefferson at the 30-yard line, skids to a stop at the 25, and the Colts let fly with a bomb on the first play of the game. The result of lengthy, smoke-filled skull sessions? Nope. The play was used by McCafferty's son at Delaney High School. Winning in the Milwaukee rain, 13 to 10, the Colts gave up only their first touchdown in 12 consecutive quarters. Against Buffalo the following Sunday, they weren't as fortunate. Shaw has the team set, takes the snap, takes the handoff, back to throw, fires into the end zone. It is complete for the touchdown to Haven Moses, wide receiver on the left side. Jerry Logan was a man with Moses but could not deflect that pass. And the Buffalo Bills draw first blood and take a 6 to nothing lead. Five minutes, 17 seconds remaining here in the first half. Buffalo with a seven-point lead, trying to add to it now. And the Bills are out of the huddle. Shaw steps up behind the center. Takes the snap, drops back to throw, looks down, fires right side. It is complete for the touchdown to Marlon Briscoe. The Colts were lucky to escape with a 17-17 tie. And as it turned out, their problems were just beginning. Next week at Miami. Jake Scott is deep for Miami as Lee takes the snap, gets a kick away. Scott comes up, picks it up at the 23-yard line, moves to the 30, the 35, the 40. Look out, a broken for him. He's got the goal, 25, the 40, the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. And he's in for the touchdown. 
Third down, 14 yards to go for the Dolphins. Tracy counts it down, drops a couple of steps back. Quarterback delay goes up the middle with a five and goes up. It was a quarterback delay as Tracy took three steps back, knocked the arm, and then went right up the hole in the middle. Tracy back to throw, fires one up the middle. It's complete to Newton. He's got behind the defenders at the delay, the 15, the 10, the 5, and into the end zone for the touchdown. Miami 34, Baltimore 17. The Colts were buried under an avalanche of their own mistakes. Fumbles, block kicks, drop passes. Dazed but determined, the Colts awaited the big bad Bears. And at first, it seemed like a giveaway. United takes the snap, flag on the play as he fires, and the pass is intercepted. United, as the team at the line, takes the snap. Again, he drops back to throw, looks downfield, gets the short pass away, batted down and intercepted by the Chicago Bears. Curry leads the team to the line. Unitas gets behind him at quarterback. Takes the snap. Drops back to throw. Looks downfield. Fires up the middle. And again, it's intercepted. This time grabbed off by Dick Daniels. And he moves across the 30 to the 27-yard line. After one quarter, it was 17 to nothing Chicago. Early in the second period, Jerry Hill rammed over from the one to make it 17 to 7. And then late in the first half, Unitas, the Mississippi gambler, began dealing aces. It is fourth down, two yards to go for the Colts at the Chicago Bear 12-yard line. Unitas has the team at the line, takes the snap, drops back to throw, fires to Hinton, and he grabbed this one and caught it at the seven-yard line. Unitas takes the snap, drops back to throw, fires into the corner of the end zone, and it is complete for the touchdown. To Roy Jefferson. A Mac Percival field goal early in the fourth quarter made it 20 to 14 Bears. Unitas was offended. Four minutes remaining in the football game. Unitas has taken them to a first down on the 46. Now he's back to throw. Fires another one. It's complete to Mackey. And he may go. He is going all the way for the touchdown. Result? 21 to 20 Baltimore. The ship had been righted despite an injury list that read like a battlefield casualty report. On the eve of the December 6th Philadelphia game, the Baltimore players held a closed-door meeting. The outcome was a 29-10 victory and the best-played game of the season. Linebacker Ted Hendricks commented on victory number nine. No, I think it was that meeting we had the other night. I think everybody was ready to play this game and really take the fight to Philadelphia and not, that, not let them get the first score and come on and give us a hard game about it. We really wanted to put it to them. And I think this is what we've lacked in all of our games this year is that we get ahead of a team and then we'll say, well, our job's done. And we'll just coast on out to the end of the, the final gun. But uh, this game here, we were really wanted to stick it to them and just keep on scoring. And I, this we're going to have to need to get in those final three playoff games. The running horses clinched the AFC Eastern crown on a snowy afternoon at Buffalo's War Memorial Stadium. 20 to 14, with two O'Brien field goals providing the margin of victory. There was no celebration, however. Pride had told them otherwise. They were champions on paper, but they knew it wasn't their finest performance. Buffalo, in fact, was threatening with just seconds remaining. Moses to the left, Briscoe to the right, Shaw takes the snap, drops back to throw, looks downfield. And the pass is intercepted this time by Charlie Stokes, and there's the championship, and the Colts, with that interception, just iced the Eastern Division Championship of the AFC. In the lame duck finale at Memorial Stadium, it was Earl Morrill in 1968 all over again. Entering the game late in the first quarter, the Colts' other quarterback picked apart the Jets' defense to the tune of 338 yards through the air and four TD passes. Morrill takes the snap, drops back to throw. Again, he spots his man, and again it's Hinton, and this time he's in for the touchdown. This time he beat Early Thomas by several steps. First down, goal to go. Ball is spotted at the seven-yard line of the New York Jets. Here come the Colts, out of the huddle, up to the line. Morrill, one remaining back, takes the snap, drops back to throw, pitches to the left side, complete for the touchdown, and he hits He takes the snap, drops back to throw, got his man, he's wide open in the end zone and takes it for the touchdown. Jimmy Orr, wide receiver on the left side, grabs that one. He was wide open, he had Cecil Leonard burned again. Morrill, 
Fakes the snap. Drops back to throw. Got the time. Fires long to the right side. It is complete to Perkins. Touchdown! 35-20 to 20 Baltimore in their top offensive performance of the season. The total one-loss record, 11 victories, two defeats, and one tie. On the horizon loomed the playoffs and a possible Super Bowl berth. Morrill, who had been there before, sounded the keynote. Everybody, I think, had to get sharp for this game, and uh, Eddie did have a good day and uh, beat his man over there. And I just uh, hope that everybody uh, keeps the same form for this coming week in this playoff game, and uh, I'm looking forward to going all the way. For some, like Morrill, Unitas, Jimmy Orr, Bubba, and Billy Ray Smith, Fred Miller, John Mackey, Mike Curtis, Jerry Logan, Dan Sullivan, and Bob Vogel, it meant a second chance. For others, like Norm Bulash, Billy Newsom, Ron Gardine, Tom Nowatsky, Sam Haverlack, Jim Duncan, Roy Jefferson, and Jim O'Brien, it was an opportunity. For all the Colts, the pot of gold waiting under the Super Bowl rainbow was clearly in focus. This time, they vowed they would not fail. When the Cincinnati Bengals clinched the American Conference Central Division Championship after just three years of existence, it set up a teacher versus pupil confrontation for the AFC semifinal game at Memorial Stadium. Don McCafferty had played for Bengal coach Paul Brown at Ohio State in the early 40s. For both, playing in a postseason game so quickly bordered on a rags to riches script. The Cincinnati Cinderella story was to come to an abrupt halt, however, on this cold and windy day after Christmas. The Baltimore defense and Johnny Yu were the villains. United takes the snap. Short one up the middle. Complete to John Mackey across the 45 to the 46-yard line. United has them set. Takes the snap. The handoff goes to Bulash. Up the middle shooting for that first down. And he broke one tackle at the 48-yard line across the 50 down to the 46-yard line. And the Bengals. United's back to throw. Spots his man. Fires downfield. It's complete to Jefferson. And he goes in for the touchdown. With the score 7-0 Baltimore in the second quarter, Jimmy O'Brien did what he knows how to do best. Long and into the wind. Now with that, there's the snap. The kick is up. It is a wobbler. It is long enough. It is good. Just drops over the crossbar. And there you had a 43-yard field goal. 10 to nothing, Baltimore. And the struggling Bengals had yet to register their second first down. With defensive plays like this, it wasn't difficult to see why. Carter has the team set first and 10 at the 35 for the Bengals. The handoff goes to Robinson, sweep to the right side. He is in trouble. Mike Curtis is there and runs him out of bounds at the 30-yard line, a loss of five. There's the snap. The ball is placed. It is blocked by the Colts, rolling toward the far sideline and out of bounds. Carter begins the count, takes the snap, rolls out to the right side. He is in trouble, and Bubba brings him down back at the five-yard line, a 10-yard loss. The highly touted Bengal running game, averaging 147 yards, amassed only 63 yards all afternoon. And when Virgil Carter tried to pass, Carter has the team at the line. Counts it down, takes the snap, drops back to throw, looks downfield, pumps once, fires, and it is intercepted by Mike Curtis. Mike Curtis picks that one off in cold territory at the 48-yard line. It was intended for Bob Trumpy, and for Curtis, that's his sixth interception of the season, number 26 for the Colts as a team. Unitas completed his day's work in the fourth quarter in a third and 18 situation. Unitas takes the snap, back to throw, he's got the time, fires, it is complete to Hinton at the 35, across the 30 to 25, he'll go, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for the touchdown. Final score, Colts 17, Bengals nothing. The Bengals, like their baseball counterparts, the Reds, had journeyed to Baltimore and departed a loser. For rookie Norm Bulash, it marked his greatest game as a pro. Running for 116 yards, it was the first 100-yard-plus effort by a Colt back since 1969. It's a great feeling. Um, I don't know what to say. The guards were blowing it. The line was just blowing them back, and all I had to do was run around in. I was up for this game. It was just a feeling. You just getting a chance of playing a championship game, and um. I think everybody was up for this game. It was really something. Everybody, you could feel it in the atmosphere. The top three Cincinnati runners were held to a total of just 37 yards rushing. One of the reasons was gigantic Bubba Smith. That's beautiful, man. 
you got 11 guys out there. They talk about our team not playing good ball, our team being old. But we got a lot of good ball players on our team, and a lot of ball players that want to win. And they want it just as bad as I do, and, and I think they're going to be giving it all they got the rest of this series. On the following afternoon, the Oakland Raiders down Miami 21-14 setting the stage for the January 3rd AFC title game at Memorial Stadium. The first championship game at home for Baltimore since 1959. With the Colts leading 3 to nothing in the second quarter, David Lee was forced to punt. There's the snap. Takes it, gets the kick away. It is a beautiful high spiral. Atkinson takes it and fumbles and falls on the ball. It squirts away. It's at the 45-yard line of the Raiders, and we'll see who recovered. Big pile up, all the Colts motioning, and they did recover. Just two plays later. Colts out of the huddle, up to the line of scrimmage. Unitas takes the snap, fakes the handoff, back to throw, fires, the pass is complete to Hinton at the 25, to the 20, the 10, the 5, and it's stopped at the 3-yard line. First and goal to go for the Baltimore Colts, and the Colts, Brace, are playing fine football this afternoon. We're a couple of yards from Pater's. Unitas has the team at the line. It's an eye formation now. First time we've seen that. The handoff goes to Bulai. Second man through. He is in for the touchdown. And the Colts are out in front by a score of 9 to nothing. Raider quarterback Daryl LaMonica pulled a hamstring in the second period. And to the rescue came the 43-year-old miracle man, George Blanda. Blanda, who has played pro ball in four different decades, had bailed out the Raiders time after time in 1970. And it looked like the Colts were in for more of the same. A 47-yard field goal attempt by George Blanda. The angle is to the right. The ball is snapped. The kick is up. It is long. It is good. George Blanda. Blanda fakes the handoff. Back to throw. And he is hit just as he unloads. It is far downfield. And it is complete for the touchdown to Boletnikov as Charlie Stooks fell down in his pursuit. Stooks slipped and fell at the six-yard line. Boletnikov waited took the pass, and went in untouched. After an O'Brien field goal broke the deadlock, making it 13-10 Baltimore, wise Dr. Unitas, a youngster in comparison with Blanda, began manipulating his surgical tools. Unitas looks over the Oakland defense as he moves up behind Bill Curry. Bill Lasky moves right up the line of scrimmage on the left side. Unitas back to throw. Fires out right side. It is complete. To Roy Jefferson. He is hit and dropped at the point of the reception, but it's the first down for the Baltimore Colts, and no question about it. And on the next play, an abbreviated version of the old Statue of Liberty. Unitas fakes the pass, gives off to Boulay, sweep to the left side, he's at the 10, the 5, and he goes in for the touchdown! 20-10 to 10 Baltimore, but in a classic shootout of ageless quarterbacks, their careers totaling 37 seasons between them, Blanda came roaring back. But on the next series of downs, Unitas sealed the Baltimore victory. Unitas is set. Takes the snap. Drops back to throw. He's got the time. He fires the pass. It is complete to Perkins at the 45 down the sideline. To the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5. He's in. Ray Perkins gets the TD. A painful sight for Oakland fans. As in the closing moments, it was evident that Blanda's wizardry had disappeared. Blanda has the Raiders set now with a minute to go in this game. Takes the snap. Drops back to throw. Looks downfield. Bubba's got him! Nailed him at the 42-yard line. Blanda takes the snap. Drops back to throw. Fires downfield. Incomplete. Taken on the hop. Blanda with 20 yards to go. Takes the snap. Drops back to throw. Fires long along the sideline. And it is broken up. Almost intercepted by Charlie Stooks. Intended for Fred Boletnikoff. The Colts take over. First and ten. At the Oakland 43-yard line, 14 seconds remaining. We have just seen the last play of this game. The Baltimore Colts, seven seconds to go, are the AFC champions. There's the end of the ball game, and it's on to the Super Bowl now for Coach Don McCafferty and the Baltimore Colts. The Colts were AFC champions, 27-17. to In a jubilant Baltimore locker room, key players like Eddie Hinton, Rick Volk, Billy Ray Smith, John Mackey, and Ray Perkins discussed the victory with Jimmy Orr. Nettie, you did a fantastic job today. Thank you, Jimmy. I think without your help and Earl and Johnny, uh, I think my season wouldn't be almost as successful as it has come out to be so far. 
And uh, we have Ricky Volk here. Ricky, you made a great interception. Well, Jimmy, it's been a long time since I had an interception. I guess my uh, the percentages are in my favor. And uh, now we have here the old rabbit. And, well, you know, we've been around a long time, rabbit, 13 years, been together all those years. And uh, we got one more chance to get it all. Well, James, all I've got to say is I probably couldn't win it for a better guy. If you'll come on down there, I'll do the best I can to get it for you. I'll take Bubba down there with me, and we'll see what we can do about winning the thing for you. Well, I told him last week, you know, my wife made some sausage and biscuits, and I brought them up here for lunch. I gave one to Bubba, and I said, Bubba, if you don't do well today, you're getting no more sausage and biscuits. And uh, uh, he took me at my word. And uh, here's John Mackey. You know, Jim, one thing that really amazes me about this team this year is the fact that for the first time, uh, any Colt team that I've been on, it's still improving. It seems to get better each week. Perk, you did wind up being the hero today. Uh, if, you, if you can get right down to it, you uh, put it out of reach for them, and I'm as happy for you as I would be for myself. Well, I'm right happy myself, Jimmy, but as far as heroes, I think we've got 40 of them, or some 45 or 6 counting the coaches. I'm just really happy to be a part of this organization. Was there ever any doubt you were going to make it to the end zone? Oh, I had two or three doubts. It seemed like it took me five minutes to get there. As you know, I've been kind of down this week, and I was kind of weak, but I figured I'd get there one way or the other. And from an optimistic Carol Rosenblum, this prediction. It's a great day for all of us, and I've lost my voice and everything else, but... It's just the happiest time for all of us, and this time we'll bring it all back. We're going to beat anybody we play. I just believe it. This but, squad's going to beat anybody. The Super Bowl cast was set when the frustrated Dallas Cowboys, losers of five straight postseason playoff games, knocked off Detroit and San Francisco. The Cowboys had managed a spectacular regular season comeback, and once again were determined to silence those who said they were incapable of winning the big game. Sunday, January 17, 1971. Over 80,000 people jammed into the Orange Bowl to witness the last roundup. Unitas Savvy pitted against the doomsday defense. The superb Dallas running game versus the improved Baltimore stopping force. And for a while, it looked like nobody wanted it. Backs divide behind Johnny Yu. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, backs the throw, looks downfield, fires, and it is intercepted by Chuck Holley. At the 28-yard line, across the 30, breaks through one tackle, moves across the 50 in the cold territory, the 46-yard line, and John Unitas himself takes him out of there. In motion to the right side goes Dan Reeves. Also in motion goes Bob Hayes. Morton back to throw, looks downfield, fires the pass. It is incomplete. It was almost intercepted. And there is a flag on the play. I believe it's going to be a holding penalty. The official just pointed his finger at number 73, which is uh, Ralph Neely, the offensive uh, left tackle for the Cowboys. And this ball game is halfway through the first quarter. Whitby in the punt for the Cowboys, standing at the 27 to get the kick away. And he hits a dandy. Gardeen goes back, and he will field it at the 10. Fumble. Scramble for the ball down at the 10-yard line, and the Cowboys have recovered. Inside the Colts 10-yard line as Ron Gardeen fumbled that long, long punt. After two Mike Clark field goals gave Dallas a 6-0 lead early in the second quarter, Unitas on third and 10 called for a pass to Hinton. John goes back to throw again. Sets up. Fires out left side. Incomplete. Taken by John. Goes off the fingertips of the intended receiver. Bounced into the hands of John Mackey and he goes in for the touchdown. He goes in. And the ball was tipped, but it was also touched by one of the Dallas Cowboys, and Bill Renfro is very upset. It was an individual to uh, Eddie Hinton, and I was trying to clear out that area, and uh, I think they went to his home defense, and uh, they were sort of like doubling on uh, Eddie, and uh, when uh, uh, the ball was hit two or three times, but the last man that hit it was a defender, and I knew it was good. I caught it, and then I uh, did my 9-1. It was ruled that Hinton deflected the ball to Mel Renfro, who in turn tipped it to Mackey. In a game of bizarre occurrences, O'Brien's try for the extra point was blocked. Jimmy O'Brien will try the extra point that will put the Colts ahead. There's the snap. The kick is blocked. It is no good, and we have a tie football game. After the Cowboys punted twice and Baltimore once, Unitas again faced third and ten. This time, he was not as lucky. Unitas has them set again. Backs in tight behind him. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Back to throw. In trouble. Rolls out to the left. 
in trouble again. Going to run with it now. Across the 25. Hit. Cross up the football. And it is recovered by Jethro Pugh. Just three plays later. Here are the Cowboys. Out of the huddle. Up to the line of scrimmage. Shift out of the eye formation. Morton takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Throws the little pass to Thomas at the 10-yard line. The 5. Into the end zone for a touchdown. It was not to be Unitas' day. A vicious tackle by Big George Andre on the next set of downs made sure of that. The Colts held, and off the bench came Morrow, itching to shed the goat horns that had plagued him for two years. First down and ten yards to go for the Colts, and Earl Morrill is in to do the quarterbacking. Earl Morrill at quarterback. Johnny Unitas shaken up when he was hit and forced a fumble. Earl's done a good job for the Colts in his few appearances this season. Takes the snap, drops back to throw. Fires one, upfield. It is complete to Eddie Hinton at the 30-yard line, down to the 25 of the Cowboys. And Bill Renfro makes the stop. Morrill has the team at the line. Takes the snap. Backpedals, throws the short one over the right side. It is complete to Jefferson at the 11, breaks the tackle, moves down to the 5, and inside the 5. But then, seconds before the half, a ferocious Dallas goal line stand. There's the snap. The handoff to Boulay. Second man through. He is stopped at the one-yard line. Takes the snap. The handoff goes to Boulay. Sweep to the right side. He's trying to get in, and he is stopped for no gain. Maybe thrown back for a half a yard or so. Morrill has them set. Counts it down. Takes the snap. The handoff goes to Boulay. Puts his head down. Rams into the middle. He did not make it into the end zone. Morrill has the team at the line. Counts it down. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Looks. Passes. It is incomplete. It is intended for John Mitchell. And Mitchell could not get to it. Jim Duncan fumbled the second half kickoff. And under a full head of steam, the Cowboys, sensing a score, moved to the Colt two-yard line. But breaks sometimes have a way of evening out. Morton takes the snap. The handoff goes to Thomas. He is still in there. Thomas hits to the one-yard line. Stopped by the Colts. Fun away, and a fumble, and the Colts have recovered. Wayne Thomas fumbled that football, and the Baltimore Colts recovered. And it was Jimmy Duncan who drove in there and recovered that fumble. This proved to be the turning point. Instead of trailing 20 to 6, the Colts had the ball and a chance to tie. And a Brian field goal attempt sailed wide of its mark. But in the early going of the fourth quarter, the Colts had another chance. We'll see what Earl does. Takes the snap, gives off to Haverlack. It's going to be the flea flicker, but Haverlack is having trouble finding a receiver. Fires, it is complete to Eddie Hinton. He's at the 15, the 10, fumble. It goes into the end zone, but who is going to recover it? It goes out of the end zone, and what happens? They will rule. That ball was chased all the way through the end zone by both teams. And it is going to be brought back. Rule the touchback, Ted. It is ruled a touchback. It was now left up to the defense. And they were true to the task. Morton takes the snap, drops back to throw, and there's Roy Hilton. He gets the pass away, and it's intercepted by Rick Polk. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, down to the 2-yard line. Roy Hilton came in there and put the great rush on Craig Morton. Hilton deflected that ball as Morton threw it. Rick Polk picked it out of the air and ran it down to the 3-yard line, and it's first and goal to go for the Baltimore Colts. Little-known players have habits of becoming key figures in games like this. In Super Bowl V, it was Lion cast off Tom Nowatzki. Morrow has the team at the line. Takes the snap. The handoff to Nowatzki. Hits over left tackle. He's got a yard or so. Curry over the ball at center. Morrow counts it down. Again, it's Nowatzki. He slams into the end zone for a touchdown. And it's now a 13-12 football game, and it's up to Jimmy O'Brien to tie it up with the extra point. Morrow will hold. O'Brien gets set. Puts it up there. It is good, and we have a tie football game. The clock was now a factor. With four minutes to go, the Cowboys were forced to punt. The ball was downed on the Baltimore five, and in three plays, the Colts could move only five yards. It was under two minutes remaining when Dallas took over on the Colt 48. Two straight losses resulted in a second and 35 situation. Morton was forced to throw, and the Colt lassos were ready. 
The ball is at the Cowboy 27-yard line. They have lost considerable yardage here. It is second down and many, many yards to go. Morton rolls out to the right. Gets the pass away down the sideline. Intercepted by Mike Curtis at the 25, the 20, down to the 23-yard line. The Colts have the football. They bounced off Reeves' hands, I think. Uh, I'm drifting over. We're in the... I'm just drifting over trying to help with the tackle, and the ball is just lucky to land right in my hands. I couldn't help but catch it. And then I looked around to see where everybody was, and I gave my old fullback move and started moving out, trying to get as close as I could. But anyway, I fell down. No, I didn't want to fumble. That was it. <laughs> as the seconds ticked away, Norm Bulash moved the ball to the center of the field, and in came O'Brien. On the sideline, easygoing Jimmy Orr had tried to soothe the rookie kicker. Uh, Obi was a little nervous over on the sideline. I kept talking to him, trying to soothe him down a little bit. And you know, I told him even though we, even if we missed it, we could come back and uh, play it overtime. And I thought once we tied it up 13-13, it was our ball game. It is a 32-yard field goal attempt. Head onto the goal post. Earl Ball is holding. Nine seconds going on the clock. The Cowboys and the Colts all tied up at 13 to 13. Baltimore had fumbled four times, threw three interceptions, played without the great Unitas, and still were champions. It was that kind of game and that kind of year. And for the rookie coach, a quiet but effective leader, an opportunity to prove that actions speak louder than words. The uh, players out there on both teams did a fine job and gave all, of the, all the excitement the fans wanted. They gave them good football. Uh, you, don't, you don't play with the words, you play in the field. That's where it counts. For retiring Billy Ray Smith, a simple but honest farewell. Well, it might not have been the most exciting game we ever played, but it was enough to tear your nerves up, I'll tell you that. So I want to tell all my friends in Baltimore, hello, we're bringing home the bacon, and I'll see you when we get back. Adios. For Senator Bill Curry, a veteran of two previous Super Bowls, it was also something very special. I've been on a couple of world champion teams with the Packers, and that was wonderful, and I love those guys, but I don't think I've ever been on a team where it was quite so difficult. And I think the more difficult things are, the more you appreciate it. And perhaps tight end John Mackey summarized the feelings of all the Colts when he said, it's good to be a champion. You can make money working, but uh, you can't walk down the street and have them call you a champion unless you're on the field. The writers branded the Colts a team of destiny, a well-balanced unit that seemed to play just well enough to win. Win they did, as their 14 victories will attest. A team that refused to give up, that 
mesh the character of men like Morrow, Unitas, Mackey, and even Tom Matty into a relentless drive to a Super Bowl victory. The crusade was complete. The Baltimore Colts, world champions.